A little overdue, but welcome to part three of the Drift Trike series. So since my previous video, I've pretty much finished the entire trike, except I ran into a bit of an issue, which I'll talk about later on. For now, let me show you what I did. I decided to swap out the BMX handlebars with these mountain bike handlebars. This way my arms aren't way up in the air while I'm riding, and it's just much more comfortable. I then installed a 3-speed hand throttle where you can switch the motor speed from low, medium, or high, and installed the matching grip that came with it. Someone in the comments from my previous video mentioned that I should have a torque arm on the front fork. At the time, I wasn't familiar with what a torque arm was, so I looked it up, and they're actually used to prevent axle rotation from hub motors. So thanks to Scott's comment, I decided to order one just to be safe. At this point, I took the entire trike apart and reinforced the back welds beneath the seat before giving it a fresh coat of paint. After all the painting was finished, I began to put the trike back together. The next thing that I did was mount my speed controller onto the side of the component box. It was a bit too long to fasten nicely to the side, so I 3D printed some mounts for it. Originally I had installed a different speed controller, but I had to replace it because it kept cutting out on me during testing, and then it just stopped working altogether. Okay, there we go again, the power cut. I don't know why that's happening. I don't know if it's the speed controller or the BMS. It's one of the, it's one of the two. I thought the problem was with my BMS, so I tried bypassing it, but still had no luck. At this point, I was forced to wait patiently for the new controller to arrive in the mail. The new controller works great, and I haven't had any problems with it so far. If you're interested, you can see the wiring instructions by clicking on the purchase link in the video description. I 3D printed this housing for the key switch and this battery indicator that I purchased. The housing fits snugly over the cutoff at the top of the frame. I pre-drilled all the holes before I did any painting. Here's a diagram that shows how I wired it up. A turn of the key turns the trike as well as the indicator on together. So you may or may not have noticed that I've been wearing this Aussie Wawa hat in my last couple of videos. Uh, I only got a handful of these made up, so I thought that I could use them for a giveaway. I figured I would start uploading behind the scenes photos in between my videos on Instagram. So in order to bring some of you there, I'll be giving two of these hats away through my Instagram. I'll post the rules for the giveaway in the video description. So I unfortunately need to tell you guys that I made a mistake when building my lithium battery pack. To be honest, I pretty much knew nothing about building a lithium battery pack before I took on this project, and that's how it is with a lot of my videos. I always enjoy learning new skills as I take on new projects, and unfortunately mistakes do get made. The problem is with the LG cells that I purchased. Each of the cells have a capacity of 2600 milliamp hours, which is great for this application, although I completely looked over the discharge rate, which is 500 milliamp standard and 5 amps maximum. Having 7 of these cells wired in parallel only gives me a maximum discharge rate of 35 amps, which is not enough because my controller can pull a lot more current than that, especially during acceleration. Now if you watched my previous video, you'll see that I used 8 Sony VTC5 cells, which have the same 2600 milliamp hour capacity as the LG cells, although they have a maximum discharge rate of 20 amps. Having 7 of these cells wired in parallel gives me a maximum discharge rate of 140 amps, which is more than enough current for the trike. So what I did was order 83 more of the Sony cells, as well as a new BMS. I'll be rebuilding the battery pack before the final test video, which will be posted very, very soon. I figure there's no point in me filming myself build the battery again, but I will be posting behind the scenes pictures on Instagram. So if you're interested, make sure you go give me a follow, and remember, you can even win a hat. 
Again, I'm very sorry about this mistake with the battery, but I figured it's best that I be honest with you guys so you can learn from my mistakes as well. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and make sure you stay tuned for the final test video so you can see this thing in action. See you next time. <laughs>